Imagine a car so powerful, so fast, and so ahead of its time that even Ford wasn't ready to build it. In 1995, Ford unveiled something that looked like it had time-traveled from the future, the GT90. It wasn't just a concept, it was a technological statement. A 720 horsepower V12 beast capable of reaching a theoretical 253 miles per hour. The GT90 wasn't designed to compete, it was built to dominate. Yet, it vanished almost as quickly as it arrived, from its mind-boggling 253 miles per hour top speed to the wild engineering choices that made it one of the most unique cars ever built. The Ford GT90 was a true pioneer. In today's video, we'll break down what made the GT90 so extraordinary and why it ultimately never reached production. Stick around for some shocking revelations about the car's untold story and its lasting impact on supercar development. Let's set the stage. The Ford GT90 wasn't just a car, it was a technological time bomb that exploded onto the scene, shaking up the automotive world. From its bold design to its mind-blowing performance stats, everything about the GT90 screamed innovation. But as we'll see, it wasn't just about being fast, it was about reimagining what was possible. At the heart of the GT90 was its engine, a 6.0-liter quad turbocharged V12, an engineering marvel that was capable of producing 720 horsepower. This was unheard of in the mid-90s, a time when most supercars were still relying on naturally aspirated V8s or modestly boosted V6s. The GT90's engine wasn't just about power. It was a testament to the future of high-performance engines. The quad turbochargers allowed the car to reach its incredible top speed of 253 miles per hour, putting it in a league of its own. Imagine this. You're behind the wheel of a car that can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.1 seconds. That's the kind of raw power the GT90 offered. To put it into perspective, even the fastest supercars of today, cars like the Bugatti Chiron, are only just touching that same level of performance. And this was all happening in 1995. It's mind-blowing to think that Ford was willing to take such a massive leap into uncharted territory, but that's exactly what they did. But here's where it gets interesting. This wasn't just a fast engine, it was an engine that was ahead of its time in every sense. The V12 wasn't just powerful, it was also designed to be incredibly smooth, thanks to the turbochargers and the fine-tuned balance that Ford engineers achieved. It's the kind of innovation that would go on to influence how supercar engines are designed to this day. Now let's dive deeper into the design of the Ford GT90. When it comes to supercars, we all know that performance is paramount. But in the world of high-end cars, the way they look is just as important. And the GT90? It was a showstopper, a true work of art that managed to turn heads the moment it was unveiled. The car had an imposing presence, one that demanded attention. From its low, wide stance to its angular body, the GT90 looked like something out of a science fiction film. Sleek, aggressive, and unmistakably futuristic. Even though it was crafted in the mid-90s, the GT90's design seemed to exist in a time and place far ahead of its own. It wasn't just a car, it was a statement. But here's the thing, the GT90 wasn't just designed to be visually striking. It was designed with a deeper purpose in mind. Every inch of this car was sculpted not just for aesthetic appeal, but for performance. Ford's engineers knew that in order for the car to hit the absurd top speeds it was capable of, it had to be as light as it was strong. Enter the carbon fiber body. This lightweight material was key to the GT90's agility at high speeds. Carbon fiber is known for its strength to weight ratio, and the GT90 made the most of that. The carbon body kept the car light enough to handle insane cornering and quick acceleration, but it was still durable enough to handle the pressures of extreme speeds. But perhaps the most striking part of the design was the rear-mounted engine. While the world was still playing it safe with traditional engine placements, Ford took a bold risk by positioning the engine behind the driver. This radical choice not only gave the GT90 its aggressive silhouette, but also improved its handling by better balancing the weight distribution. This move was integral to its performance. It gave the car greater stability at high speeds, a quality that would be crucial when pushing the limits of the GT90's capabilities. The GT90 wasn't just about going fast, it was about having the confidence to control that speed. Ford didn't stop there, they also engineered the car's aerodynamics to work in harmony with the design, making the GT90 as efficient as possible in the air. Every curve, every edge, every vent was meticulously sculpted for a purpose, to 
to minimize drag, maximize downforce, and ensure stability at those mind-bending speeds. The GT90 wasn't just a beautiful car, it was an engineering marvel, a fusion of form and function that seemed to anticipate the needs of a high-performance machine years before its time. Aerodynamics can make or break a supercar, and Ford understood that the GT90's ability to reach 253 miles per hour wasn't just a matter of raw power. The design had to enhance its speed, stability, and handling. Ford left no stone unturned when it came to the car's aerodynamic design. It wasn't just about making the car look fast, it was about ensuring that the GT90 could cut through the air like a hot knife through butter. To achieve that, the car's body was carefully shaped with every angle designed to improve airflow and reduce drag. The underbody was meticulously engineered to ensure smooth airflow, preventing turbulence that could slow the car down. But it wasn't just the smooth, sleek body that made the GT90 stand out. It was the advanced active aerodynamics, a feature that would have been groundbreaking even today, let alone in 1995. The rear wing of the GT90 wasn't just a decorative feature, it was functional, adjusting its angle depending on the car's speed. At lower speeds, it would reduce drag, allowing the car to cut through the air more efficiently. As the speed increased, the wing would raise, increasing downforce to keep the car firmly planted on the ground, even at its insane top speed of 253 miles per hour. This kind of dynamic aerodynamic control wasn't just cutting edge, it was visionary. Today, we see similar systems in modern hypercars, but Ford was ahead of its time experimenting with this technology years before it became mainstream. But there's more. The combination of the GT90's low center of gravity, rear-mounted engine, and advanced aerodynamic features meant that the car was not only fast, it was agile. At over 250 miles per hour, most cars would begin to lose their stability, struggling to keep control. Not the GT90. Its precise balance and aerodynamic design allowed it to handle those insane speeds with unmatched stability and control. It wasn't just about reaching top speed. It was about making sure that the driver could safely navigate at those speeds. Get the attention you deserve with a custom neon sign. We offer handmade neon signs. Our process is simple. Visit our website, glonio.com, and click Custom Neon Builder for an on-demand experience. Start typing your custom text. Choose a font, color, and size. We will handle the rest by handcrafting your LED neon. We also produce high-quality neons to match your business logo by completing the form on our business neons page. The GT90 was a car that didn't just defy the limits, it redefined them. It was the embodiment of what happens when cutting-edge technology, innovative design, and extreme performance come together in perfect harmony. Now imagine this. You're behind the wheel of the Ford GT90 pushing it to its top speed of 253 miles per hour. The world around you blurs as the car effortlessly glides through the air, its engineering marvels working in harmony to keep you stable and in control. It's not just fast, it's a whole new level of performance. But here's the catch, Ford never mass produced it. Can you imagine what the automotive world would look like today if the GT90 had been released? Would it have set a new standard for supercars? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I, so why did the Ford GT90 never make it into production? Despite being one of the most advanced cars ever created, there were a few critical reasons why Ford decided to pull the plug. The first was cost. The GT90's engineering was incredibly expensive to produce. The quad turbocharged V12, the carbon fiber body, the advanced aerodynamics, all of these elements came with a hefty price tag. Ford realized that even if they could make the car, the cost of production would be astronomical and it wouldn't make financial sense. But there was another problem, market demand. In the mid-90s, the supercar market wasn't nearly as expansive as it is today. The idea of a car like the GT90 with its radical design and groundbreaking technology was just too out there for many buyers. Ford wasn't sure that the public was ready for a supercar of this caliber, and that uncertainty played a major role in their decision to shelve the project. And so, the Ford GT90 remained a concept, a beautiful piece of automotive history that was never fully realized. While Ford eventually went on to produce the modern Ford GT, which did have its own fair share of success, the GT90 remains an icon of what could have been. It was a car that pushed the boundaries of speed and technology, a reminder that sometimes the future is just a little too ahead of its time. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Ford GT90, make sure to hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments. 
Would the GT90 have succeeded if it were released today? Do you think Ford missed an opportunity? Don't forget to subscribe for more stories about the cars that change the world. See you next time.